Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture on media planning and strategy. If you remember when we uh, early on in the lesson in, in the semester we talked about the two major decisions that we have to make concerning advertising and marketing communications in general. We said that uh, the two major decisions were the message strategy that is you know, to whom do we want to speak and what do we want to say to them? And the other one was media strategy. So we spent a large part of the earlier, you know, parts of the semester talking about developing the message strategy, all the analysis and planning and trying to figure out what goes into it. Uh, and now we'll be talking about the media strategy, media planning and strategy. So let's begin. I can get this thing to work. Yes. So, media planning, first of all, we have to understand what are the goals of the media plan. What do you think the main goals of the media plan might be? Probably you can guess you want to try to uh, maybe put the advertisement in front of the correct people, right? In front of your target audience. But you also want to try to do that in a way that maximizes the impact, right? That makes the biggest effect on the audience, the one that you're intending it to do. So you want to ma maximize the impact. Uh, you also think that you'd probably want to do it at the lowest cost possible while maintaining that intended effect, right? So you can summarize that you can boil it down to basically two words you want to maximize effectiveness so the two words okay let's say four words maximize effectiveness and maximize efficiency so the if we're going to you know say two words the goals of the media plan effectiveness and efficiency so this requires us to understand some things about the media. We need to understand um, which media classes are out there and available to us and what are the particular media vehicle choices uh, that are within them. So the, the media class, we've said this before, but just to, to say it again, the media class is if you're choosing you know, between radio or television or magazine, those are different classes of media. The media vehicles are within the media class, right? The different alternatives available. So if you're talking about the media class of television, which television channels? If you're talking about magazines, which specific magazines are you thinking about using? And each of these, uh, okay, well, before, let me just say, before we um, move on, to another topic. Let me just say that the, the, the media landscape has changed dramatically and it, it continues to evolve and continues to change. And this is, you know, it makes it a bit interesting, but it also makes it a bit challenging to constantly keep up with what's available. So let me just give you some examples of how things have changed. You know, every Every year, you know, if you have a media agency, say you're working for a large company that uses a media agency, before the, you know, or during the planning period, usually sometime after summer and in, in the early fall, around, you know, around September, October, you're going to start planning your next year's plans. You're making your next year's, you know, um, marketing plan. So you're going to want to know what is possible what what is out there that it, or that you can possibly use so your media agency will come and they'll make a presentation and they'll say look these are things that are new and available to you perhaps so here's um oh, okay well <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself let me just say that uh i'll just show you a little bit about how the media landscape has changed and then we'll, we'll go into that discussion about new media First of all, if you look in 2007 at the distribution of spend on different media, um, what do you notice? Well, you notice that the internet was only 
of the media spend. Uh, television, including cable, syndicated, and network, is the dominant, uh, and also spot TV, I should say. Television is the lion, getting the lion's share of the spend, right? Newspaper is around 20%, magazine around 20%. But over time, what do you think happened? Well, probably you can guess, right, that the internet started climbing in importance. Back then, though, you know, people were spending um, disproportionately. They kind of were spending incorrectly uh, because they were stuck in kind of traditional ways of thinking. So that people were actually using the different media um, you know, the time people were spending on different media didn't match up with how much the advertisers were spending. So this is in 2010. If you look, uh, people were spending 25.2% of their time on the internet, but advertisers were only spending, you know, less than 19% uh, on that medium. Um, you know, television... And it was basically matched up almost identically, but internet really was, you know, incorrectly matched, and as well as um, mobile, if you look at mobile as well, that people were spending um, much more time on mobile, it looks like 8.1%, but the spend was only half a percent, right? And you can look farther and it's set and shows that for newspapers, you know, consumers were spending almost around 5% of their time with newspapers, but the ad spend was around 16.5%. So a big mismatch, right? You can see these numbers just not matching up. So in 2015, what do you think happened? Well, of course the internet started catching up and you see that here in 2015 in the US media internet took 26% right huge increase uh, you see newspaper and magazines took a huge hit because internet is a big competitor right that in some senses there's a lot of similarity that instead of you know, buying a newspaper or magazine, you can kind of browse on various websites and get similar content. So uh, you're seeing them as a competitor and that, you know, the, the spending drifted toward internet. And just another look um, here, it shows that in 2017, in terms of global advertising expenditure, internet is actually the dominant one, which is not unexpected, right? Because people you know, almost from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you go to bed, you've got your cell phone in your hand. And even in my class, and maybe even right now, you're either watching this on your cell phone or, you know, you have your cell phone right next to you. Turn it off, by the way. I can still see you. You should be paying attention. So uh, another look here, uh, you know, in terms of a comparison between 2017 in blue and 2020 in orange, you see television, for example, going down, magazines going down, newspapers going down. You also see desktop internet going down. And what's the big gainer? Yes, mobile internet. And again, this is just something, you know, looking at the distribution over the years, you see the blue base at the bottom, which is the largest, you know, share at 25, you know, no more than that. It's about, let's say, I don't know, 35% in the beginning. But it goes slightly downhill. But digital just climbs, right? That dark blue box, the second, second box that's up on each of these columns, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you see that newspapers, which is in green, right, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, magazines in red getting smaller and smaller, and directories as well getting much, much smaller. Because instead of using directories like, um, you know, to look up a number, now we're just using Google. So this is the changing media landscape.
But there's also new media opportunities, and this is what I was telling before, I kind of got ahead of myself. You know, every year there are new media available, and, you know, if you're using an agency, they'll come and, and make presentations and, and tell you what, what's possible, because they want to sell these new media. And if you don't have an agency, then, you know, you can try to be creative and look for these new media yourselves. And it's, you know, it's a possible way of reaching potential customers, you know, in a new way, and maybe at, if you're lucky, at, at lower, you know, low cost, maybe more effectiveness if it's something new that, you know, for example, um, one year when I was working at this company that most of you know by now, I'm not going to say the name, uh, we were presented with a, a company came called Pani, right? They came and they had this new technology. The technology was this kind of projector, right? It's a, this thing is actually quite large, maybe a couple meters long. Uh, but what they can do is with this super high powered lamp, throw images up on buildings. So they, they can project this as a spotlight, you know, so here's the building in the daytime. And then using this, you know, this series of projectors, they can convert it to look like a library, you know, with books. So maybe either as a, an art installation, perhaps, but also as an advertising opportunity. Imagine that if you had a company and you wanted to kind of project some cool images, you know, you could convert these dead spaces on buildings to quite useful advertising spaces. Um, I have a, you know, a longer, you know, the actual, um, the actual PowerPoint that they had used when they made the presentation, but I'm not going to go through that now. Just suffice it to say that, you know, that was one new opportunity that was quite interesting. Also, for example, this one, uh, this was an advertisement, an outdoor advertisement, but it was a, what do you call it, a bus stop, a bus shelter, bus shelter advertisement. And it actually used facial recognition technology to determine whether the person looking at the ad was a male or a female and then it could change the uh, content of the ad depending upon you know whether it perceived as a male or female of course it wasn't perfect it was something like I don't know 80 to 90 percent but still interesting and you know very interesting approach that got a lot of engagement right and it also plays into the idea of targeted right well targeted ads which generally these, you know, you would expect not being very well targeted, right? A bus stop, bus shelter advertisement is just whoever is there, that's, you know, who sees it. But this is a, a way of targeting a little bit better. Another new media opportunity, uh, I'm not going to play it now, uh, but I played it one time already. It was the Nickelodeon spot. Uh, for Sutash is the Sat Basha. Oh no, I didn't play it yet. I think that this, this is yeah. Sorry, um, I, I'm not going to play it. What I'll do is I can I can uh, put it on the I can um, you know I'll put it in the uh, O2 class and you can just take a look at it. And this is something that was presented by the media agency to Sutash when I was working there for the kids products. So it was like a sponsorship of um, the break between, uh, you know, between um, television programs, but at the hour. So at like, you know, if it was like two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, it would just show a little clock and show that, you know, Sutash products, uh, specifically Buu Mix, was sponsoring this clock and it was on Nickelodeon and you can, you can watch it on your own time. So the next issue is, you know, understanding not just the media class and media vehicle choices that are out there, but also you need to know the advantages and the limitations of each of them. Now there's a section at the end of this uh, PowerPoint that I'm not going to go through, but you can go through on your own time. It just lists the strengths and weaknesses of each media type, mostly the traditional media. But... Um, for now, let's just look at the different characteristics, right? We've got creative characteristics, audience effects, media dimensions, and costs. 
And we need to know each of these dimensions, okay? So we'll talk about it in 